Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us this morning at this Your Overseas Home webinar. Today's session, we will be talking about the golden three experts that we recommend you have in place to help you buy a property in France. My name's Hannah Armstrong, and I'm going to be hosting and taking you through today's session. Our business as a whole has been assisting buyers with their property purchases for over 10 years now. We help you to avoid any pitfalls in the process, provide you with all the information you need, help you to save money and crucially make this really exciting step in your life as enjoyable as possible. With the travel restrictions lifting and the COVID situation slowly improving across Europe, we have seen a real surge in demand over summer for properties in France and we're delighted to have you all joining us on that journey today. So as I mentioned, we'll be hearing from three Golden Three experts today. First up, we will hear from Paul Harris of Smart Currency Exchange to think all about your currency risk and currency management strategies. Next up, we have Anna Stewart of Beauvillage in Southwest France. And lastly, we will hear from Leah Maynard of Buckles Solicitors. For those of you who are joining us live on this Saturday morning, if you do have any questions for any of our panel, do pop them in at the questions section on the right hand side of your screen and we will aim to answer as many of these as possible for you. So without further ado, I'll hand over to the first of our Golden Tree experts, Paul Harris of Smart Currency Exchange. Um, now, Smart are based here in the UK and they are able to help with um, customers from all over the world who are looking to transfer funds. Um, I, first of all, I would like Paul to start by giving us a bit of a background into Smart and how he's able to help you, our viewers today. Over to you, Great. Paul. Thanks, Hannah. Uh, morning, everyone. So yeah, just a little bit of background about smart currency and, and, and what we do and how we can help. So we're a, a foreign exchange specialist. Uh, we've been around in the markets uh, for over 16 years now. Uh, and our main aim um, on, your, on your buying journey is to help you uh, keep, well, avoid any potential pitfalls and risks uh, when associated to currency movements uh, and keep the costs as low as possible uh, when it comes to the actual currency transfer uh, when you're moving money obviously over into France for the purchase. We're widely seen as, as the property experts within the industry. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, big partners, obviously you can just hear from some of them today that are specialists in, in buying over in France. Uh, but over, over the 16 years that we've been running, we've helped over 40,000 people um, do exactly what you're looking to do now and, and buy property overseas. Uh, one thing we're incredibly proud of as well is our, our ranking on Trustpilot. Uh, we're ranked uh, with 4.9 out of 5 stars uh, with over over 1,500 reviews now. So please do go and have a look at, uh, at the Trustpilot page as well, where you'll see obviously some, 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 some live feedback from our, from our actual customers that to, 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 will just outline exactly how we can help you and, and how we've helped them in the journey as well. Thanks, Paul. That's wonderful to hear. Um, and you've put some FAQs up on screen there, sort of the common questions that you're asked. I think it would be great to, to start by understanding what different services Smart actually provide to their clients. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the, you may have done some research already uh, and looked into, into the, the various things uh, that, that we can offer. You may have already actually even spoken to us as well, which is fantastic. Uh, but our main products that we offer um, are, are the, the types of contract, obviously, and the, the, the ways that we can support you with actually the actual transactions. So our main two products are a spot contract and a forward contract, and I'll, I'll explain uh, how those differ now. So a spot contract is is essentially you would, you would speak to us today, uh, agree an exchange rate, uh, and we'd fix that exchange rate for you. You'd send the money straight over to us in, in for example, pounds sterling. We would forward the agreed, pre agreed amount of euros straight out, which we can get into France either the same or next working day. So, incredibly quick, uh, convenient product for you, uh, and obviously really time efficient as well. Um, can, can really be, can be a very quick transaction if you do need money very quickly over into France. But our most popular product when it comes to the actual property purchase uh, is, is a forward contract. Now, I'll explain uh, with a scenario how a forward contract actually works. So, so for example, uh, you're on a viewing trip over in France at the moment. You fall madly in love with a property and you, you want to sign on the dotted line straight away and you, you agree a price. So that price will be fixed and it will be in euros. Um, so you'll know exactly how much the price, uh, the property price is going to be at a euro figure. Uh, one thing you don't know is how much obviously that's exactly going to cost you. Uh, saying, for example, using the example, if you're in the UK, how much that's going to cost you in pounds sterling, because that will be going up and down dependent on the on where the market price is at that time. So you'll have your price fixed in, in euros. But you won't have a fixed price in euro uh, in sterling. Sorry. 
So what a forward contract does is it allows you to fix a, a, a sterling price. And for example, you've, you've signed on the dotted line. You may not actually need to transfer any money for, for maybe upwards of three, three months, potentially a little bit more. So what a forward contract does is it allows you to fix your price in euros. You, you've agreed that price and signed on that price. But you then fix your price in pound sterling as well. That price is then held up until the completion date. Uh, and it gives you full peace of mind that you, na you then know your euro price and your pound sterling price. And the, we don't actually, at that point, if you're booking a forward contract, need for you to send us all the money at the start either. We would ask for a, between a 5 and 10% deposit just to secure the contract for you and secure that exchange rate. And then on completion, you just pay the remaining balance. So it's not a 5 or 10% fee. It's just a deposit, which is part of the uh, which is part of the total cost for you. So the real benefit there is, it, as I said, it gives you complete bit peace of mind uh, that you've got your price fixed in euros, and you've also got your budget secured uh, and, and 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 fixed in pound sterling as well. So it doesn't matter what happens in the market. If the market was to drop, you're still secured at that uh, at that price that you've agreed with us already. So great option for you if you are looking at uh, securing a, a cost. Two other options that we have for you are orders. So slightly different. Um, we have an order to buy and an order to call. So again, same scenario. You've you've signed on the dotted line. You've agreed your price uh, in euros, but the exchange rate isn't exactly where you want it to be. Uh, you want the pound to be slightly stronger against the euro, and say, for example, two maybe one, two, three cents higher than where it is at the moment. Absolutely fine. Uh, we can put an order in for you and uh, and actually target that exchange rate. An order to call would be would uh, would be as 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 it says on the tin really. As soon as that exchange rate is hit, we'd give you a call. We'd let you know the exchange rate is is now achievable that you're looking for. Would you like to proceed? Order to buy, uh, it's slightly different. You would send us the money ahead of time. When that rate exchange rate is hit, we would book the contract for you, uh, and and obviously the, the the funds would be transferred at that at that uh, at that rate that you're aiming for. Most important thing to mention here, though, and to be really clear on, if you are looking at an order, that's absolutely fine. We can't guarantee, just because we're aiming at an exchange rate, that we'll be able to get that exchange rate. We're, the exchange rate we can offer will always still be from the live market price. Uh, so it does come with that little bit of added risk. Um, if the market was to go the other way, we would then obviously have to book a contract at a, at a slightly lower exchange rate for you. So there is the potential upside for you, but we, we, we you do need to be mindful, obviously, that the market could go the opposite direction. So all very popular products, but the most popular is is that forward contract because it just gives takes all the risk away for you and uh, gives you full peace of mind that you know how much it's costing you in euros and you also most importantly know how much is going to be coming out of your bank account uh, to pay for the property. Thanks, Paul. That's really helpful and great to understand. Um, you mentioned obviously there about the forward contracts and how that can really protect and make sure that you you know exactly how much you've got to spend and you can uh, you know make sure that you have everything you need to to hit that purchase price. Um, if the if you booked a forward contract but the rates were to move um, in your favour, um, do Smart help you help you out if they move the other way? Uh, no, no. Uh, short, short answer to that. If we booked a forward contract for you it is fixed at that price. And the, the reason we, we can't benefit if it goes up uh, the same way we don't suffer if it goes down is we actually buy all the euros for you at that point. So we're actually holding on to that that, that full amount of euros for you. Uh, so, and it basically just gives you a, an extended period of time to, to pay for it. So we, we unfortunately can't benefit for any upside, but we also don't um, don't lose anything if it goes down. That's very helpful. Thanks, Paul. Um, and somebody's asked this morning, in terms of those spot contracts, if that's something that you can do sort of straight away, you know, really quickly, it kind of, um, you know, across one or two phone calls with your team, um, do they need to be set up for an account to do that? Or is that something that you can just do sort of instantaneously? You do need to have an account with us, yes. Uh, so we're, we're a fully regulated company, uh, financial uh, services provider. Uh, and we, we're governed by HMRC and, and we're, we're authorised by the FCA. So those those rules and guidelines there mean that we would have to have you as a as a as a as a verified client. Signing up is incredibly simple. Um, some of you may have already done it and, and have gone through the, the process. It's, uh, it's it's a matter of if you're doing it over the phone, maybe a five or ten minute conversation where we'd be also be explaining the process. But you can go directly to our website and you can be signed up and registered to an account in a matter of a couple of minutes, really. Um, so it doesn't take very long if you are looking to do it very quickly. You, there's not a case where it will take you a few days for us to process things. We, we can do things very quickly. That's brilliant. Thank you. Um, and a couple of questions have come in this morning, actually. We've had David ask and um, Callum has asked, um, how do um, Smart make the money on this? What are your sort of costs or fees for this? 
Okay, yeah, good, good question. So we we don't charge any fees. We don't charge a commission at all on any of our transfers. So but obviously we do make money uh, somewhere. So just to, 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 to give you the, the simplest explanation is you, the exchange rate that you look at. So if you were Googling, just to use the pound sterling euro exchange rate as an example, you'll see the, the price uh, on Google, which is the what's called the interbank or market price. And that's where the banks will be trading with each other. Uh, we'll buy it very close to that exchange rate for you. Uh, and the rate we offer to will always be slightly lower. Um, so it'd be very close to that market price, uh, but always slightly lower. And we just make the money between the two prices there. Um, it, we can explain that more over the telephone when you're booking a transaction. And it, it would always be very clear what the exchange rates was where that you were getting. Um, but yeah, there's no additional fees on top. So the exchange rate that we offer to you is the exchange rate that you would get. That's brilliant to hear. Thanks, Paul. Um, and another question has come in this morning um, from a gentleman called Paul, um, who's asked, how is his money safe? What sort of protection do you have in place when the money is actually transferred to Smart and you're holding that? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's safe. the safety and security of your funds is is paramount to us as well as yourselves. Um, obviously, as a, as a regulated business, we have to make sure that there are safeguards in place anyway. Um, but we, when you send money to us, the money gum doesn't go straight into a smart currency account. It goes into a client holding account uh, that's in your name. Uh, and then if there was anything to happen to us, so we would cease trading or, or anything while we were holding your funds, those funds would be returned in full uh, back to, to the account that sent it to us. So, yeah, as I said, we, as I mentioned earlier, we, we're fully regulated and, and authorised by, by the governing bodies uh, that, that we need to be governed by. Um, and uh, again, if, if we if, if we were to have any financial difficulties while we're holding a fund, it, it would be returned in full to the account that we that we've received the funds from. Thanks, Paul. That's great. And, and I hope that reassures um, the customers with those questions Um, kind of thinking about the actual um, purchase process. So obviously you've you've um, got, a, got a question there on screen about what happens if my property purchase falls through. Can you just kind of talk us through? The, the whole process, you know, how early should customers be thinking about currency, sort of what stages they would be working with Smart in their journey, and then what happens if, if something does go wrong in the purchase journey? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a common question we get asked and, and a, a common thing that we, we get told that we don't need to speak to people, to, to us at the early stages. And um, yeah, the actual nuts and bolts of moving the transfer, moving the money, you probably won't need us uh, straight away. But if you were looking online, if say you're right at the early stages today, you're, you're on potentially right move or looking at uh, a comparison sites, if you're looking at types of property, so areas, types of property, number of bedrooms, et cetera, et cetera. You'll also be looking at a price. Um, so even subconsciously, you're probably automatically thinking about the currency transaction that, 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 that will be taking place later down the line. So where we can help you from an early stage is simply just helping you understand how much, how far your budget can go. And uh, there'd be no obligation to use us when you, whenever you speak to us, it doesn't cost you per phone call. So from the early stages, if you're looking at properties and you, you're potentially looking at ones that are slightly higher than where, where you were before, give us a quick call and we can help you understand if your budget would would, would reach those uh, and be able to, and those properties would be affordable. Um, so yeah, right from the early stages, we can we can be a real asset to you. It doesn't have to be a 20 minute phone call that you speak to us on. You can speak, pick up the phone to your account manager, have a quick two or three minute conversation with them and they can help you understand how far the budget will stretch. So it's uh, yeah, from the early stages, we can be an asset to you. Brilliant. Thanks, Paul. Um, and you talked a little bit about sort of um, the services that, that you guys provide with the spots and the forwards uh, and things like that. Um, why should a customer choose to use Smart um, for those sorts of services rather than perhaps engaging with their bank? Uh, well, the banks, first of all, won't actually offer all the services that we offer. Uh, typically, they will only offer you a spot contract. Um, but actually using a company like ourselves over the bank is the, the service you get will be will be will, will be chalk and cheese that you could walk into a high street bank, uh, speak to a cashier, potentially speak to a personal banker. They may have no experience in, in, in foreign exchange. It might not be their level. Um, it might not be their area of expertise. It's completely our area of expertise. So we can give you a little bit of guidance on where the markets have been, where they could potentially go to. Obviously, we'd never say predict where the market's actually going to end up. But we can give you that extra guidance uh, and support throughout. Uh, and we can offer, if you're, if you're potentially concerned about moving the money, we can do a sort of full hand-holding service where we take all the pressure away from you and manage the, manage the transfers themselves. Uh, so yeah, the main, the main reason would be, obviously, the banks won't actually be able to offer those services. 
uh, but the actual guidance and support you get, uh, you also wouldn't get from a, from, from a typical high street bank. Brilliant. That's fantastic. Thanks, Paul. I'm conscious of our time this morning. I feel like we could um, chat on a lot this morning um, on this topic, but I do want to make sure that we've got time um, for our other speakers. If and if further questions come through, um, Paul will do his best to um, to answer those for you. And if we've got any time at the end, we, we might circle back around. So thanks very much, Paul. But um, we're going to move on now to um, the really exciting part of the process that I know everyone is particularly uh, looking forward to, and that is the property hunting part of your joint your journey. Um, so, talk to, so to talk us through this this morning, I'm delighted to be joined by Anna Stewart, the area coordinator at Beauvillage, who particularly specialise in southwest France, and they offer an award-winning service uh, for their customers. So welcome this morning, Anna. Thank you for joining us. Um, I'll hand over to you to take us through your presentation, but if any of the customers have got questions, um, do pop those in and we will get those to Anna um, after she's gone through the presentation. So uh, welcome and over to you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, welcome, everybody. Um, so yeah, my pleasure to go through a little bit about what we do and the exciting phase of searching for property and, uh, and where that takes you. So today we're going to talk about uh, the first contact with the agency, uh, finding the right property for you and how we can make sure that the properties that you look at are really the type of thing that you want to be seeing, understanding uh, the finance, keeping up to date with property developments, price reductions, and properties that are absolutely uh, perfect for you. And what happens when you found the right property? But I wanted to just highlight with a couple of properties this morning, just to give you a little taster of what you can find here. Now, this property is a bit of a rare find. It actually has two mills, uh, uh, a flour mill and a walnut mill. So that's quite rare to find. Uh, it's a three bed, three bath property with a 44 square meter kitchen with views over the tarn. Um, and we just thought it was, you know, quite important for you to be, understand, you know, what the property you're looking for, what, what you need, uh, you know, what's important for your search. Uh, so the agent that you'll be put in contact with through Beau Village will ask you all sorts of information about what it is that's important for your property when you're in France whether it's a second home a main home and you know the really important parts that we need to find for you and we can do that with a phone call or with a zoom hangout so we'll really tailor the search to your needs and send you a selection of properties that really really will suit you um, and we can do these by virtual viewings as well so if you're not able to come to France for a reason we can set you up on our BBI plus service which gives you the advantage of a virtual tour gives you the localization of the property and you know gets you to look at the the area without actually physically being in France if you need to look in, in you know short immediate time but there's nothing quite like being here with your feet on the ground to have a look at what we've got to offer uh, obviously there's budget properties uh, so, you know, low end, this property is a three bed, one bath property in the Charente. Land size is 350 square metres and it does require a little bit of TLC to finish. So this one will need a little bit of reinvestment, but it could be perfect if this is what you're looking for. So to understand the costs of buying in France, when you see a property advertised, it will include the agency fee. OK, but it will not include the notaire fee and they are currently at around seven to eight percent, normally eight percent of the price of the property. So you need to include that on top of your purchase price. OK, uh, currency exchange rates. Obviously, we've talked about that early with Paul, but that's something that, you know, when you found the right property, you really need to be thinking, have I really got the, the, the funds for all of this? And before you come to view, it's an idea to have had a, a chat uh, with SMART to, to have a look at what your budget is really going to get you and where you can negotiate to. Uh, so you need to think about renovation costs and things like that. Uh, when you're viewing with Beau Village, we will be obviously viewing you with a, with a local agent who will give you local information with reputable artisans that can help you with things like a renovation or development or putting in a new kitchen or bathroom. And perhaps if English is your principal language, somebody that will speak in English as well, because there's nothing quite like that with, with a builder or, or an artisan. 
So, you know, and we will share all of our local knowledge and tips. We've all been and bought property in France. We know how you feel and how nervous it can be in the beginning, your anxieties. So, you know, speaking to a local agent, we can reassure you that what you're doing, many, many people do it and they will in, in years to come uh, and give you lots of tips and advice on, on who to talk to and, and, and uh, the best way forward. Moving on, so when you're in touch with an agent and we've had an overview of what it is you're looking for, it may well be that a property that wasn't previously in your budget now is in your budget. So when we have a price reduction, we share this information across the whole of the BVI company and we are 120 strong agents. So it may well be that if you're not area specific, but the property has to be perfect, it might be that a property not in your original area of search might come into your, your budget. So we would send you details of a property that's coming into your budget that could be absolutely perfect for you as soon as we've had the instruction to reduce that price. So we will keep you informed uh, as to how the market is moving. So next of all, uh, you found the perfect property and this one looks particularly perfect. It's a four bed, two bath property, not far from saint Folocan. It's a turnkey uh, property. So this one is absolutely perfect throughout, redone throughout uh, and has fantastic views of the Dordogne. So what happens now, you offer and we do the negotiation for you to make sure that the, the property is at the absolutely best price possible. Um, and again, the, the price that you negotiate will still include the agency fees. So at Beau Village, we will offer you a bilingual service. So the, the file, once negotiated and the price is, is, is accepted by both parties, we will then uh, create what we call a letter of intention, um, which confirms the price that you've, you've, you've agreed to pay for the property. We will then, uh, if not already in place, request the diagnostic reports and uh, those will be will sent to you uh, to review. And we'll go through those with you as an agency. We work through the whole purchase with you. So from viewing right through to getting the keys in your hand, we'll be with you along with our bilingual service. If there's any issue with translation, we will be able to help you with that. Absolutely no problem at all. So once you've reviewed all the diagnostic reports, uh, we will uh, go to compromise with the notaire. So this is where you are then contractually obliged to continue after you've had a 10 day cooling off period. Uh, and at that point, you will then pay your deposit of 10% once you've had your 10 day cooling off. The act of vente normally follows two months after that, uh, but usually the process to buy between offer and keys in your hand is between four to five months, depending on whether you're buying with cash funds or mortgage, and if the diagnostic reports are in place at point of offer. But again, we'll be with you all the way through. So one more property to show you. It's, it's a bit of an iconic one really, because most people think of France, they think of a village property, walk into the boulangerie uh, and a pool in the garden. So this offers all of that. Uh, so properties are selling quickly now in France. The market really has turned and we are finding that the demand is, is quite high at the moment for um, the French and also international. So if a property is maintained and pretty and on at the right price, it will sell quite quickly now. So again, we would suggest that if a property is perfect for you on the brochure to request a virtual viewing, and if it is perfect for you, and if you're comfortable, you can offer from having a virtual tour. So that, that's my presentation. And uh, any questions that you've got, feel free to, to send them through. 
Thanks, Anna. That was fantastic. And I mean, all of those properties look wonderful. I think I could quite happily turn up with my suitcase uh, and move into any of those. They, they look fantastic. And um, you mentioned there on your last slide um, just about, you know, you're sort of seeing the, the high levels of international demand and the market really picking up. Um, a customer, Paul, has asked, um, you know, is it very much a, a seller's market at the moment? Is that sort of what you're finding happening? Yeah, we are finding that the market has turned and um, we are finding that previously uh, it, it was a buyer's market, but we wouldn't say that now. Uh, we would certainly say that uh, properties that are priced well uh, are selling very quickly and therefore our vendors aren't necessarily minded to accept terms it might have done perhaps 12, 18 months ago. So, yeah, it's definitely different. Thank you. And I hope that answers um, the customer's question. Um, Daryl has asked a question about sort of um, how Beauvillage work. I mean, it's a fantastic and really comprehensive service that, that you guys offer for the buyers. Um, do you represent the buyers or the sellers? Where does sort of Beauvillage um, make their fees in, in all of this? Well, we, we offer service to both parties, actually. Um, so, yes, of course, our aim is to sell a property, but equally to have a very happy buyer. Um, so we offer what we try to do is best service. So we, we absolutely make sure that the client has, first of all, a local expert to speak to, to talk about what they want, what they need, uh, to make sure that the uh, selection of properties that they're sent through absolutely are tailored to what they're looking for. And then again, when that's fine tuned to the viewings, they are looking at properties that are absolutely worth their time because we know that quite often you might only be able to come for a weekend or a couple of days and that actually when you're here you've got to make the most of your time um, and then following through we make sure that you're happy all the way through that any questions or concerns that you've got we we answer as fully as we can and if we need to refer you and get further details from the notaire we'll do that as well and we'll make sure that the notaire that helps you is is offering also an English speaking service. Uh, all of our dossier coordinators who deal with the paperwork in the sale are bilingual as well. So they will deal with the notaire for the sale and any questions that come through the agent that we can't cover will go to the dossier coordinator who will give us a more in tune uh, response to any questions you've got. Um, but at the end of the day, when we've when we found the, the right property for you, we make sure that the vendor is fully aware of your circumstances and the vendor is happy with how the sale is pr progressing, that he's got a good buyer who can proceed. And at the end, when we when we you know complete the act that the, the vendor feels they've had the best service, they've had good quality clients come through the door that haven't wasted their time. We've negotiated properly for them and they're happy with the end figures. So really, we offer a service that caters for both the vendors and the buyer. That's a great explanation. Thank you so much, Anna. Um, now, Christine's asked if you could just give it a, a little bit more um, background into the areas that you cover and, and any particular recommendations for British buyers. OK, well, we cover the whole of the southwest of France. So uh, from Poitiers all the way down to Carcassonne. So, look at the southwest of France and we're there. We have 15 offices uh, throughout the southwest of France and that's growing. So, you know, we cover the whole of the area. Um, so really it depends on what you need from France. It depends whether you want to be rural, whether you want to be nearer to a town. Climate obviously is, is, is important because the further down in France you go, the warmer the climate is, the hotter the the summers and equally the warmer the winters. So um, it really depends on what you're looking for and what you need from your main or holiday home in France. Thanks, Anna. That's that's really helpful. And we certainly recommend um, for Christine and anybody else listening with those questions that you do get in touch with Anna and the team. They're so knowledgeable about all of the different areas and they're, they're really, you know, based right out there um, in the heart of southwest France. So they'll certainly be able to uh, to talk you through your requirements. And um, Sharon's asked a really interesting question this morning about can she offer on a property before she sold her home in the UK? Would your vendors typically accept offers like that? It depends if the sale of the property in the UK is going to be funding the purchase here. Uh, normally, we wouldn't uh, encourage an offer until you're proceedable. Because the market's changing, our vendors are very aware that uh, 
they, they want to proceed more quickly. So normally we would suggest to you to have either accepted an offer on your property in the UK and have something in writing before you make offers here in France, because our vendors want to know that you can proceed with the purchase. So unless you've got funds available that you don't need to sell your house in the UK, I would suggest that an offer at that point is a bit too early. That's great advice. Thank you very much for that. Um, David's asked an interesting question about the deposit. Is the percentage deposit that a customer would pay uh, fixed or does that sort of change depending on circumstance, depending on the property or is it always the same amount? Typically, it's 10 percent of the asking price, um, but that can depend on the vendor. They may accept uh, slightly less or they may ask for a bit more, but it's usually 10 percent. If you're buying with a mortgage, and you require the full mortgage to, to, to pay for the property, it may be that the, the deposit can be a bit less. But usually we like to see a deposit to show uh, the, the sale is, is concrete and your, your um, willingness to, to proceed. So it's, it's, it's confidence building for the vendor that you know, they have got a good sale. So a deposit really is, you know, rule of thumb, 10%. Brilliant. Thank you, Anna. Um, I think we've got time for, for one more question. I feel that we could chat um, for, for a long time today because there's so much that we can cover here. Um, but I really just wanted to understand for the listeners um, what they can kind of expect in typical utility bill costs. Is there a sort of council tax equivalent? What's the sort of typical kind of monthly costs they could um, expect on their property sort of compared with what they're used to here in the UK? OK, so um, utility costs are across the board quite similar to what you would expect in the UK obviously gas and electric um, and then then fuel costs are, are quite comparable um, you would have a tax foncier to pay on the property and that is usually listed on the particulars for each property so you will have an indication of what that will be per year but it's generally far cheaper for your tax foncier than it would be in the UK that that what that's what we would call in the UK your council tax um, so Generally, it's a lot cheaper for your, your tax foncier and you pay that annually. Um, there is still in place in France tax d'habitation, uh, which is a secondary tax for living in France. And that, again, is dependent on your circumstances. So it depends on your fiscal status, how much you'd have to pay. Um, and again, that that mirrors quite often the tax foncier. Uh, but again, it depends on your, your fiscal status. Thanks, Anna. That's really, really helpful. Um, I think that's about all we've got time for. As I say, uh, we, we could chat on all morning. I just wanted to mention that a couple of our listeners uh, have said this morning that they're already working with Beauvillage and have uh, nothing but positive feedback for you and your team, Anna. So that is wonderful to hear. As I say, we can't recommend uh, you and your team highly enough. Um, do get in touch really early on. Uh, start this exciting process and the team at Beauvillage down in Southwest France are there to support you every step of the way. So thank you, Anna. Um, I'm delighted to now move on to the last of our golden three specialists and um, who we strongly recommend you're talking to and that's an English speaking solicitor so I'm delighted today to be joined by Leah Maynard of Buckles Solicitors now Leah is a French national but now based in the UK and she joined the Buckles team back in 2016 uh, she's fluent in both French and English and a specialist in cross-border matters so really really well placed to help you all today so welcome Leah thank you for joining us on your Saturday morning um, I'll hand over to you to um, go through your presentation and then I've already got some questions coming in from the audience and I'm sure we will have a few more uh, to get through at the end. So over to you, Leah. Thanks, Anna, and good morning, everybody. Uh, yeah, so as Anna said, I am one of the lawyers with the French team at Bocos. We specialised in French property and inheritance law. We are a UK-based law firm. We are regulated in the UK. Uh, we work with a lot of people, both in France and in the UK, so obviously we work with your currency dealer, your estate agent, but also we have contact with surveyors uh, based in France, uh, immigration specialists who can now assist you with obtaining the relevant permissions to travel to France, as well as uh, bilingual accountants who can help you with any questions related to French income tax or capital gains tax. Um, 
we are very often asked why would I want to pay for a solicitor when I'm already paying the notaire's fees and the notaire is neutral and able to act for both parties uh, in a transaction. Uh, the answer to that is that we are here to act for you and nobody else in the transaction. So we will always be acting in your best interest and uh, we won't have to be concerned with making sure that we also manage the uh, seller's expectations. Notaires, they are very good, but they are also extremely busy, which means that very often they won't have the time to get to know you and get to know your expectations and get to know your specific circumstances. And they also lack the uh, global perspective that you are a British national buying in a foreign country, which means that very often you are going to be wondering this is very different from what we do in the UK. Is this normal? And very often you can have the replies that, oh, no, don't worry. That's how we do it in France. But that's often unhelpful to you. So that's where we come in and we make sure that at every point in the process, you are comfortable, that you understand what's going on, that you are not over committing yourself and that uh, you understand all the legal documents that you are going to be asked to sign especially the most important document being the preliminary sale and purchase contract which is signed very early on in the process and is extremely involved i mean if a notaire drafts it it can be 20 30 pages long of very french legal language and even with a translation you might not feel that you actually understand what you're committing to so that's where we come in providing you with legal advice in english in writing and not only do we advise you on that, but we can also advise you on a lot of peripheral issues that you don't especially think to when you're purchasing a property. For example, um, Anna was mentioning purchasing a project. So that's where we can tell you, be careful when you sell capital against tax, you would need to keep those invoices to make sure that you can offset when you sell. And very importantly, we also advise on issues of ownership structure and estate planning, which have to be taken into account because unfortunately when you buy in another country you make your estate very complicated and often there can be some uh, severe consequences if you haven't thought about everything at the time of your purchase and um, because this probably sounds all very nice in theory um, I thought I would give you some very practical examples of how we have helped our clients buying in France and we've really made a, a difference for them. Um, hopefully, uh, I'm going to try not to keep you too long, so I might skip some of those uh, because I'm just looking beautiful outside and I'm sure uh, you would all like to enjoy your Saturday. But um, the preliminary contract, I just can't highlight enough how important it is that it's properly drafted because if you haven't worded your conditions properly, you might be at risk of losing your deposit if your conditions aren't met. Uh, for example, somebody was asking about, can we commit to buying in France if we haven't yet sold in the UK? So it's possible, but it's very risky. And if you do find a seller who agrees to do that, you have to make sure the condition is properly drafted because you could end up losing your deposit if your sell in the UK for through at some point. Um, everything in France is regulated. That is uh, sadly true. Um, I've put the example of a pond. It has happened on the files that we found out that the pond on the property, which our clients absolutely loved, hadn't been declared to the local authority, which means that even several years after the purchase, the local authority could have come knocking on the door saying, your pond isn't authorized, you have to completely remove it. So obviously we made the uh, purchase conditional to the seller declaring the pond to the local authority. Um, likewise, we had an issue with clients buying a beautiful property with an old mill. And because we took the time to speak to them, we found out that they actually wanted to use the water mill and to have it running. So we got the local authority to come and do a survey. And then, surprise, the river is not compliant with the latest EU directive. Uh, you have to pay 30,000 euros to bring it into compliance. And because this came um, across very early on in the process, we managed to negotiate that the seller would pay half the cost. Um, something also 
that is extremely important is that a lot of people will focus on the contract and might ignore all the other annex documents that come with the contract. When you are buying a property in an apartment building, this would be a very big mistake because it will reveal a lot of very important financial information on the apartment building itself. And uh, you will be provided with minutes for the Assembly General meetings for the past three years and a lot of financial information. And things you want to be on the lookout for is, is the co-ownership gearing up to paying for very expensive building work? Because you would be on the hook for that. I'm thinking rendering of the walls, which can go into the tens of thousands of euros, and you would be liable for a share of this or especially in the Alps, they've got beautiful wooden balconies that can be very expensive to maintain and to repair. Also things like that, that you would be financially on the hook for. You've already spent a lot of money committing yourself financially to buying a property. Are you really ready to be committed for 10,000 of euros of building work cost in the next three to five years? Um, things that are also important is, are people actually paying their co-ownership charges? That's something that would be revealed in those documents. And if they are not, it could mean that is a building work that is necessary can't go ahead. For example, you've got a, a dangerous parking lot, but people are not paying it to get it fixed. Or um, you could also be on the hook for uh, fronting the cost for any legal recovery proceedings against people who aren't paying. So when you just bought into a property, the last thing you want to do is to pay for uh, costs to be recovered for people who've owned the property in the building for the last five years. Uh, likewise, you can see if people are just really difficult uh, in the co-ownership, you know, building work are necessary, but somebody keeps questioning everything and refusing to agree. Likewise, you could be stuck on building work that are necessary, but never go ahead. Or you want to change your windows, which needs to be authorized, and there is Mrs. X, the neighbor who just doesn't like you and she's going to vote against you all the time. So that's all the kind of things that uh, you need to be aware of before you commit yourself. One last thing I want to comment on, and that's really something that the notaire is not going to be able to advise you on, is cross-border estate planning. So making wills and structuring the ownership of your property. And that's really very important. And the issue is that the notaire will have the French perspective but they won't have the global perspective with you being a British national potentially thinking about moving to France. And a lot of time, the notaire just won't advise you on that. And the proper property structure would only be put in place if you ask, but you can't ask if you haven't had the legal advice on what is most suited to you, your circumstances and what you are um, looking to achieve, especially uh, I mentioned the Tontine in my slide. Tontine um, is a way to have a joint ownership in France. Uh, otherwise, the default property structure is to own as tenants in common, which is the complete opposite to what you would usually have in the UK. A Tontine can only be inserted in your deeds on purchase. And at the moment, with the introduction of a new French law that's going to come into force on the 1st of November, Tontine is probably going to be the best way to protect your surviving spouse or surviving partner and ensure that they inherit the French property without any risk for a forced hardship claim. So all those things um, are things that we would advise you on. And really, I would completely understand solicitor costs are high, you're already making a big financial purchase. Even if you feel you don't need legal advice on the purchase itself, do take advice in terms of your estate planning, because this is something that you can't correct. And uh, we, we are faced often with clients whose partner has passed away and they own a property in France and they just didn't realize how complicated it would be. And it's just not something that you think about where, you know, you're happy, you're going to buy your property in France, you're going to spend fantastic holidays there, but it's something that you really need to take uh, legal advice on before you commit to your purchase. And that is it for me. And I'm sure there are a lot of questions. So happy to deal with those. Thank you so much. That was a fantastic overview and, and so many things that you've brought up there that I think people wouldn't be aware of. Uh, things with everything with regulation, you know, really interesting. So thank you, Leah. Um, I wanted to start by um, a question that a few people have asked this morning. Um, 
we obviously know that post Brexit there are implications on residency and how long you can stay in Europe. We, we understand that side of it, but are there actually any differences for British customers looking to purchase a property? Does the property purchase process change at all um, now that we've exited the EU? Absolutely not in terms of the purchase process. You can keep buying just as you did before Brexit. Of course, Brexit is going to limit the amount of time that you can spend in your French property without the appropriate paperwork. The one thing where Brexit has made a big difference is for people who are selling their properties in terms of the regulation surrounding uh, capital gains tax. That's great advice. Thank you, Leah. Um, now, we've had a question that's just come in um, from Karen. She's asked, um, do you explained very well about the um, using a solicitor and, and kind of how you differ from a notaire. Can somebody just use a solicitor um, or do they have to also um, have a notaire? No, you have to have a notaire. Just to explain briefly, a notaire is a state appointed official in France and the job is to make sure that the buyer is provided with all the mandatory legal documents in their purchase and then they are here to make sure that stamp duty, capital gains tax, any other taxes that are due are paid and then they are the only ones in France who are able to deal with the French land registry. So anything that involves a property transfer has to go through another. That's great. Thank you very much for, for clarifying that. Um, now, in terms of fees, we, we always get a lot of questions on this. Can you explain to us um, typically um, what the notaire's fees might be and what um, Buckle's fees typically, typically would be to help with a purchase? Yes, of course. So, um, as Anna mentioned, notaire's fees are usually 7 to 8% of the purchase price. They are called notaire's fees. It's a bit unfair because most of it is actually the stamp duty. So, you don't pay notaire's fees plus stamp duty. You pay 7 to 8%, which includes the notaire's fees, but about 80% of the cost is actually going to go to the French state for registration and stamp duty, etc. Uh, Buckles fees, um, at Buckles we have taken the decision not to charge a percentage of your purchase price because, uh, believe it or not, purchasing a 2 million euro chalet in Morzin can be actually easier than buying a 50,000 euro uh, studio apartment. Uh, so we don't think that the more expensive the property is worth, the more expensive the legal advice needs to be. And we usually offer two options. Either we charge you on a time basis and we will give you an estimate of how long we think we're going to have to spend on the file or we charge you a fixed fee. Um, Bocos is uh, Lexor accredited, which means that we have absolute transparency on our fees and at every time throughout the file, you absolutely will know how much the bill is going to be at the end of the day. So we really pride ourselves that you won't get any bad fee surprises. That's really reassuring. And thank you for explaining, because I was next going to ask about stamp duty. So you've uh, you've covered that one for me. Thank you. Um, Peter has asked about structural surveys. Um, traditionally, we're very used to that in the UK. You'd have a structural survey done on a property. Um, is that something that typically happens in France? Is that something that you would recommend? Um, so it's something that we uh, ask very often because there is a, a lot of misconception around the French uh, diagnostic surveys that are provided, which are only for information and do not touch on the issue of structure. It is extremely unusual in France to have a structural survey. Uh, there are British surveyors who actually practice in France and offer this service, but it is not typical to make you purchase conditional on a positive structural survey. And usually what we recommend is either get the survey done before you put your offer in, accepting that you might have to you know, eat the cost if it comes back negative, or um, you can sign your compromis, but you have to be aware that Ideally, you would want to have the result of your service before your 10 days cooling off period expires, because after that, unless you've made your purchase conditional on a proper survey, which is very out of the ordinary, uh, you would be committed. 
Thank you. That's that's really helpful. Thank you for clearing that up. Um, I'm conscious of our time this morning, so I think that that is about all we've got time for today. Um, as with our other speakers, I feel that we could have chatted on um, a lot this morning, and I'm sure there's a lot still to cover. Um, as with all of the speakers, we strongly recommend that you do get in touch with um, Leah and her team as soon as possible to support you through your buying journey and to support you with this process. Um, we will share all of the contact information plus a replay of today's session with you early next week. Um, so you can watch this again, refresh your memory, double check the details and get in touch with the team uh, so they're able to support you. Thank you to all the experts for giving us your time and thank you to all the customers for joining us this morning. Um, one last thing to say is we do have a full day property buying event that is taking place online on the 13th of November. Um, you'll be able to attend a variety of different seminar sessions similar to this covering all aspects of the buying process, you know, covering healthcare, residency, uh, things like that. And there'll be lots of talk around the sort of different culture and the lifestyle in France as well to really get you in the mood for your purchase. Uh, we'll pop a link on screen to that event now. You can register for free um, and join us on the 30th of November if you wish. So thank you again, uh, both speakers and attendees for joining us this morning. And we wish you a really, really happy uh, property purchase in France. Happy property hunting. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>